NVIDIA is looking to stay ahead of the competition with its next generation AI chips, making Blackwell Yahoo Finance's choice for product of the year. Yahoo Finance's executive editor Brian Sazi is here with more on what makes the chip stand out as that top product choice. Hey, Sazi. Hey, Maddie. Yes, uh, Product of the Year award going to NVIDIA. Really, it was a hands-down favor right out of the block with our editorial leadership team. It was going to Blackwell. Three reasons why, and you can see a, a lot of those reasons here. Uh, one, it, based on all the reporting that we have done uh, for this award, it became very clear that Blackwell is the leader. It is the clear leader in the AI chip race. Sure, you have AMD. Intel's been trying to do something in chips, trying to get into the AI space, chip space. Uh, but it is NVIDIA that still has its lead in large part uh, because what is about to come with Blackwell. And then what is about to come, the interesting thing here with Blackwell, it has already developed or a backlog of billions of dollars in related sales that will, NVIDIA will start to drive home next year, really start to influence its top and bottom lines. And why it's generating those sales, of course, guys, is because they are the leading player in building out the AI infrastructure. You put all these things together, uh, Maddie, and you really get the sense it was a Blackwell type of year, and it will be more of a Blackwell year next year as this chip gets in the hands of customers. And Maddie, you know, I, I will say this too, you made it in this business when you could stand next to, a, next to a Blackwell chip on a big screen. That's how I know I made it. Good stuff. I can feel the power of this chip oozing off the screen. I know you can, Sazi, and eventually we'll have some sort of like metaverse thing where you can really play around with that chip as you talk about it for Company of the Year. Thank you very much, Brian, for joining us on that. Yahoo Finance's Julie Hyman is also here with more on the power behind Blackwell. And Julie, I know you've done some amazing reporting on why this chip is so beloved. Yeah, I mean, I will mention one of the ironies of this being picked as the product of the year, the thing didn't ship till the fourth quarter, right? But there has been such anticipation and such demand from the hyperscalers to get it to power their um, data centers and their lar large language models that that's why we named it the product of the year. So if you look at some of the specs on this chip, and listen, I am not necessarily a semiconductor expert, but the numbers sort of tell the story here. Um, so it has 208 billion transistors. That is more than two and a half times that of Hopper, which was the predecessor chips. Um, and then there's something that uh, NVIDIA talks a lot about and other chip makers too, which is the so-called total cost of ownership. Blackwell is expensive. It is the most advanced and therefore the most expensive GPU on the market. However, NVIDIA argues that because it is highly energy efficient, the total cost of ownership over the lifetime of the chip makes more sense. And then it's not just Blackwell that NVIDIA is, sen is selling. It's really a whole computing system. So it combines with the Grace CPU for a full rack of, uh, of computing power. That's what's going into these data centers. Now, uh, CEO Jensen Wong, he rolled this out. He first introduced this in March. And here's what he said about Blackwell at the time. There's no memory locality issues, no cache issues. It's just one giant chip. And so uh, when we were told that Blackwell's ambitions were beyond the limits of physics, uh, the engineer said, so what? And so this is what, what happened. And so this is the Blackwell chip. So they, they, it's showing there the physical chip. It is the largest GPU ever made as well, we should mention. And it's made by using two die, basically two chips that are connected by high bandwidth interface. That was one of the leaps, the innovation leaps that NVIDIA made in developing the chip. Um, you can see what it's already done. Well, if you look at the revenue growth that we've seen for NVIDIA already, as I said, Blackwell didn't actually ship till the fourth quarter of the year. So a lot of this is demand for other data center ships like Hopper, what we've seen thus far. Um, but the real uh, surprise began for NVIDIA, not this year, but last May when we had that big upside surprise in revenue. Um, and then the company's revenue has just continued to grow here, although at a somewhat slower rate, the bigger it has gotten, Maddie. Yeah, that's certainly been a question we've been talking about is the decline or slowdown, I should say, in the profit growth estimates moving forward. Given that and what we've heard this week from Broadcom, what are your sources telling you just about the path forward for NVIDIA and whether Blackwell will be enough to keep right. NVIDIA as the leader? So let's be clear here. NVIDIA is still absolutely dominant in this space. When I talk to analysts, I talk to Ben Beharin, I talk to John Vinn uh, over at KeyBank, and you know they talk about 80% plus 
of the control that NVIDIA currently has on this data center generative AI LLM market, right? So they are hugely dominant. And when you look through the next year, Vin said, as long as they can solve some of their um, sort of uh, manufacturing bottlenecks that they have had and get the flywheel going, then they'll be fine. Yes, the revenue growth is expected to slow, but again, that's because they're coming from higher and higher numbers and demand doesn't seem to be of a concern. The competitive threat is going to come from custom chips most likely. AMD, yes, but Broadcom, as we've been increasingly talking about, got a lot of attention in its most recent report talking about the increase in demand for custom chips. But again, when I talked to analysts, they said the custom chips aren't there yet. They are not yet competitive. They're going to chip away, they're going to increase, and at some point maybe they will be there. But if you look over the next year, doesn't seem like that is yet happening. You have to maybe look further out to see the changes that are perhaps going to come. And perhaps those custom chips will be purchased by smaller customers who maybe aren't going to have as much purchasing power, which will keep NVIDIA's lead at the top as well. 80% yes. market share, you right. really can't. Yeah, I mean, right now the hyperscalers are the ones who are spending the money. Yeah. They have big war chests, as we know, and they are very willing to spend. They feel like it is an imperative that they spend right now. So yes, to your point, when we get further along in the cycle and it's other spending, they're going to have perhaps different priorities. Keep in mind also we are going to be switching from the training phase of AI more to the inference phase. In other words, right now, all those large language models are just sucking up information. Inference is when they put that information to work to actually think, if you will, to yeah. infer, to do the work that they are designed to do. And you want the best chips to be able to You want the that. best chips. I mean, Jensen Wong has argued that NVIDIA's chips are the best chips for that. Some critics have said when we get to inference, maybe some of the other chips will also start to gain more market share because you don't need quite as much computing power when you get to that phase. Right. Okay. Really interesting, Julie. Thank you so much. And amazing reporting as Great. always. Thank you for bringing us the product of the year details that we need.